So I'm actually surprised I made it this far. Um, last time I tried a regular blog, it died on day two. I stopped it on day two, and I actually technically didn't even make day two because I didn't put day two up. I only put day one up. But anyway, this is the 30-day hustle, day five. So I said I would talk about booking shows. So a lot of shows I play are shows that I make. I pretty much make my own shows, a lot of my own shows, and then because of that, then you end up getting booked to other shows. Um, what do I mean by make my own show? Well, first of all, it's easier if you own your own PA and subs and a mixing board and all that stuff. But you can always make friends, and that just goes back to collaborating with people, sound people, engineers, making friends with people. They probably all have bands, too. Um, and if you can get a venue that is willing to book you guys, then uh, you know you can use their equipment if they don't have their own sound. A lot of times, smaller places will let you know artists just book themselves as long as they bring everything. Um, there's a coffee shop that I always go to, and uh, I bring. I hate to be that guy, but I always bring this mini keyboard. Not always, but if I'm writing, I bring you know the uh, MPK mini. Pretty sure that's what it's called, the the Akai, and I play on that. And people always notice me playing, and they're like, "Oh, you know, you're a musician." The the owner always notices me playing. Oh yeah, well, let me hear some of your stuff sometime. I show it to him. He's like, "Oh, that's awesome." He's like, "You know, we're having a big jam session. Your your band, you know, you should come by jam, and then maybe your band can come play." So I did that once. It was an awesome show. Great vibes. Free beers for everyone. Everyone had a good time. Uh, I did the same thing at a similar place. So that's just you know making friends and. Uh, and networking and then you know other people come to those shows and you book other shows um, get to know your community uh, everyone that's in your genre you know on Facebook and whatever else and message people other artists are always playing shows so the more artists you know the more shows you're gonna get considered for because they're gonna be like every time a booker puts a show together they go do you know any other artists that that you would want to play the show with you and they go oh yeah such and such I, you know, I, I liked his set, you know, I'd love for him to play with me, we talked about it this one time. And there you go, you, you start getting, you know, organic shows just handed to you um, because you're playing shows. I mean, that's sort of that thing where doing one thing just breeds itself. Playing shows gets you more shows to play. Um, I mean, just this week, I I got a show in Riverside, and then... We now have two, I can't remember if it's two or three house parties. I have to talk to Ice Cream Fire. Um, they set up the house parties, but I play with them all over the place. And we always give each other shows. And it's a great relationship. Um, but that's just an example. I'll, I'll give the link to the mini tour. I don't know if any of you are in LA that watched this. You know, all nine of you that watched the last one. We'll see if I kept two of you and maybe gain three more and get five views on this video um, but really that's it I mean be present with your music making um, you don't need to be in the full studio every time you're making a track you can be you know out on the subway you know writing lyrics and people notice you doing that you strike up conversation you never know who you're talking to um, you go to parties that you don't want to go to because I hate parties but I go to so many of them and I always, and you don't, you know, people always ask you, what do you do? And you just say, oh, I'm a musician. You don't tell them you work at Jack in the Box or whatever your day job is, if you have a day job. You just tell them you're a musician. That's what's interesting. And then people start asking you about it, and they go, oh, my friend such and such does this over there. Oh, that'd be a great contact. Um, you know, here's my card. That's where the business cards come in handy. And you do that. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, booking shows is... Unless, you know, you can do pay-to-plays, too. Um, there's a couple of websites as well um, that are not pay-to-play. There's Afton, um, which was all right. There were, there were some... Pretty much you have to promote yourself. I mean, this with any show, um, but a lot of the artists that they ended up booking for that Afton show did not bring anyone, so that wasn't very good. It's, that's what happens a lot with pay-to-plays as well. Afton is not a pay-to-play. Um, but it's a very similar sort of setup. The only difference is, is that uh, they pay the venue and then book you 
um, and so you don't have to pay the venue directly. They take on the cost, and then they pay you a small percentage of ticket sales. Um, there's that. Indie on the Move, which I have yet to actually use yet. I'm trying to use it uh, to help get an extra show or two for my East Coast tour, but we'll see how that works out. Um, I would not trust uh, Reverb Nation for anything. Um, I had a certain amount of of album sales and there was some money on there so I decided to try and use some of that money to run an ad just to see how effective it would be and it was as if I just completely threw the money into a hole it did absolutely nothing like not one single impression on any site from anything so I would never use Reverb Nation to book a show don't give them any money ever um, and I sent them a letter about it, and they're like, well, we, we did it. We sent it to Rolling Stone, and they had an ad on there for four seconds. Um, so, yeah, don't use them. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, if I remember anything else, I'll write it in the description and give you links. But go book some shows.